What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Primal Performance. Coach Kyle here. Coach Graham behind the camera. What's up, y'all? All right, now we're continuing our video series, uh, the progression of the video series on road to a powerful two-arm kettlebell swing. Last video, we were talking about diaphragmatic breathing and the foot's relationship with the floor. Uh, if you have not seen it, go back, watch that video, get good at it. If you're not good at it yet, go back and get good at it. Now, for this video, we're going to be talking about lower abdominal control and how that pertains to stabilizing the pelvis and the spine. Uh, this video, the last video, and the next couple videos all pertain to all movement. So even though, even though I'm using this as a progression towards a powerful two-arm kettlebell swing, you better believe it pertains to lunges and, and deadlifts and squats and especially any lower body uh, dominant exercise, I guarantee you this all pertains. It still will pertain to most upper body movements, but I'm sure there's a couple things people could point out where it may not be needed or necessarily optimal. But nonetheless, today we're talking about lower abdominal control and how it has to do with stabilizing the spine and the pelvis. Um, we're going to do it using a leg raise drill. Now, most people when I see them in the gym doing this drill are doing two legs, and this progression is usually far too challenging for most people, athlete or non-athlete, when I first see them. Uh, they just use the progression that they see on TV or see everybody use, but don't understand what's supposed to be happening during the movement. So I'm going to have Coach Graham follow me down to the floor, so I can show you guys how I want you to learn this. Now, the lower abdominals, have, along, along with the glutes, have a lot to do with stabilizing the spine and the pelvis and ensuring that there is a safe and good force transfer through those groups of uh, bones. Now, what I want you to do, you're going to lie on your back and first I want you to try to get your shoulder blades to melt into the floor so you can kind of feel like you have a very proud chest. Now once you've done this, there should be an arch between your low back and the floor. I'm exaggerating it now so you can really see it. Yours may be less than that, it may be more depending on what uh, issues you have in your body, but nonetheless there should be a slight arch between the floor and your spine, your low spine. From here, the job the lower abdominals have here when they contract is they posteriorly rotate the pelvis. The glutes have a lot to do with this too, but for the sake of this video we're only going to be talking about the lower abdominals. Now. What I want you to do, I want you to tilt your pelvis back so that you can feel your vertebrae, especially between here and here, pressed against the floor. Feel your entire back between those areas pressed against the floor. You should not be able to budge a hand underneath, get anything from underneath there. There should be no space whatsoever, no light, no nothing. And I don't mean just pressed against there. I want you to push so hard against the floor as if you wanted to push the floor further down. Now, from here, once you can hold this position for a good 20 to 30 seconds, the way I want you to progress it, I want you just to pick up one leg and try to keep the knee bent. And you're going to try to do 10 reps bringing the leg closer to the floor and bring it right back up. As the leg gets closer to the floor and in that change of direction right there is where it will be hardest to stabilize the spine and keep it pressed against the floor. So be very careful as you go down to make sure you're trying to almost increase the degree of tension you have in the abs to keep the spine down. Uh, as I said, far too many people use the progression they're not ready for. All the legs are doing in this drill are, being, are acting as load along with gravity to try to pull your pelvis and your spine out of the position. And again, just like you will see in other exercises, that load is trying to twist your body up, mess you up, and you need to be able to stay tight adequately in the right spots to ensure this good force transfer. So, when you stabilize the spine via the low abs here, I only want you to use the progression whereby you can maintain that rigid spine. If you feel the spine even wavering a little bit, like, oh, there's a little bit coming up, I don't even want you to use that progression. Regress to the point where you know for every single rep, one to 10, Regardless of level of fatigue, you've not let the skeleton change position, especially the spine between here and here, change position. Once you can do 10 reps with one leg with the knee bent, I want you to try 10 reps with the leg straight. Then I want, if you could do that, I want you to try 10 reps with both legs bent, and then if that's easy enough, 10 reps with both legs straight. But don't take it for granted, okay? Don't go to the hardest progression first. I'm telling you, start off with just holds and make sure you're aware, feeling that tension down lower here when you're trying to really keep the spine pressed against the floor. 
Once you can do that, then you'll progress to the harder versions. As I've said before, problem performance, we think muscles are cruel. So go build yourself some. 